Yeah, my name is Bang Yong Song from Jungang University in Korea, and today I'm going to talk about distributed fiber sensor based on Brillouin dynamic rating. This is outline of my talk. After brief introduction, I give you some distributed sensing by BDG in PM fiber and also just a few mode fiber. Especially in PM fiber, I focus mainly on the validity of the sensing and nonlinearity of the sensing. And then I summarize the talk. As briefly introduced by Professor Hodakte, the Brillouin dynamic grating is an optically tunable acoustic grating based on Brillouin scattering. <clears throat> it is generated by the, the counter-propagated the pump waves by the SPS, and then probed by some another orthogonal polarization probe wave with at different uh, optical frequencies. The important parameter in the BDG operation is the frequency offset between the pump and the probe waves. And this frequency is given by, given by the simple equation. And this is, we call, we call it uh, a BDG frequency. And as you, as you see here, the BDG frequency linearly depends on the bifringence of the fiber. And average value is about 50 gigahertz in typical PM fiber and highly sensitive to the biofringence. <clears throat> so we can say that the BDG-based sensors are all the essentially the sensor of biofringence. <clears throat> so far, the distributed temperature and strain sensors based on BDG are demonstrated uh, based on the fact that uh, delta M is the function of temperature and strain. Maybe the simplest form is the BDG OTDA, where the counter propagation of pump waves are used for localizing the BDG generation. Here, the pump one and probe waves are pulsed, with which are synchronized. And the BDG reflection is recorded in time domain. This is the BDG OTDA. And another method is BDG OCDA, that is following the BOCDA by Professor Date where the phase-locked frequency modulations are used for pump 1 and pump 2 and probe wave, and BD spectrum is obtained for each position. In this case, high spatial resolution is potentially available, like uh, the case of B BOCDA. Another uh, some configuration which was demonstrated is BDG OTDR. That is a kind of some OTDR, like a BOTDR, where single, single end access is possible, and BDG is generated by amplified spontaneous uh, Brillouin scattering. But in this case, the signal amplitude is quite sensitive to fiber loss. <clears throat> another, another possible so, configuration, which was not demonstrated yet, is the BDG OCDR. I think this might be tested in the future. <clears throat> that has an advantage of single end access and also be generated by the amplified spontaneous emission and maybe the high spatial resolution would be possible. <clears throat> Sorry. And this is a typical map of a BDG spectrum. In the left, in the left graph, left figure, you see the some time traces acquired with the, in the time domain. And this right plot shows the, the BDG spectrum, spectral maps in according to the position. From this map, we can construct the, some BDG frequency map by choosing the peak frequency for each position. And then, <clears throat> by subtracting the reference values, we can calculate the, the delta nu, the frequency difference of BDG. And this red box shows the some strain applied section. So when there's strain, we have some uh, corresponding changes in the BDG frequency. So in this way, we can achieve some distributed measurement of strain or temperature. This, <clears throat> this graph shows the temperature strain sensitivity of BDG-based sensors. For example, the temperature sensitivity here is minus 50 megahertz per degree, and strain sensitivity is around 1.37 uh, megahertz per microstream. When compared to ordinary Brillouin sensor, the strain, depend strain dependence is about 20 times larger, and temperature dependence is about 50 times larger. And this large sensitivity is, can be seen in this graph, where the two cases shows one is the POTDA result and the other one is the BDG OTDA result with the same 
amount of strain applied with the same special regulation. As you can see, in the case of BDG or TDA, we have much larger shift of the uh, spectrum. So highly sensitive distributed measurement can be realized using uh, BDG. The characteristics of the BDG uh, depends on the types of fiber. And here, um, we tested four different types of uh, fibers. The panda fiber with different diameter, claim diameter and different NA, and both type fibers with uh, different also claim diameters. Here, you see the BDG frequencies are different due to the different amount of biopigents. When you test the uh, strain dependence, they also, they also differ a small amount of, and <coughs> mainly the center peak, peak the, the so average value is around uh, one megahertz per micro strain. And also, they have different uh, temperature so dependence also here. And there's one other point is that uh, the BDG frequency, absolute frequency, has a small correlation between the strain or temperature dependency, as you see here. <clears throat> My main point of this talk is to give some proper answer to two important questions about BDG-based sensing. First question is, how accurately we can determine biopingents from the BDG measurement? This is the basic equation of the BDG. To confirm this, we test, we measure the biopingents using uh, another method that is called periodic lateral force method. By applying some pressure to the PM fiber, we induce some crosstalk optimization, and by moving this position, we can some detect some oscillations in the after analyzers. So this is the typical result. If we count the number of oscillations, then we can uh, directly measure the bit length of the of the polarization by the pigeons. And this is the result uh, we measure using oh, using four <coughs> four different fibers. Here the inaccuracy came from the some the, the in error came from the number of the oscillations we counted. And then we, we use this uh, result for compa to compare the result with the BDG-based method. And this is the some final result. As you see, oh, maybe the laser, laser point has some problems. <coughs> As you see here, the <coughs> these two results uh, matches very well within the measurement accuracy. So, <clears throat> the delta n measurement by BDG is valid within the instrument accuracy. I especially the BDG measurement accuracy is given by the OSA, OSA accuracy, which is around one, uh, one gigahertz. And second question is uh, about the BDG is how linear is the dependence of delta n on temperature strain variation? This is an important question if you consider BDG as a, some temperature or strain sensor. For this, we carried out, recently carried out some rigorous measurement about the temperature dependence of the PM fiber biofingence. Using very accurate uh, temperature chamber, which has the temperature inaccuracy of uh, around 0 0.1 degree, we changed the temperature from minus 30 to 150 degree. And also, we used another chamber as a reference of the, of the peak frequency, which has the, <coughs> which has a, uh, some constant temperature. And then we measure the some temperature dependent changes of the BDG frequency. This is a result of uh, some Fujikura panda fiber with 125 micrometer cladding. The left one shows the overall some changes of the BDG, which looks like uh, some linear, so we can some, <coughs> which was fitted with a line. And then right, on the right side, you see the some difference of the measurement result from, from the linear fitting. So as you see here, we really observed some, some considerable amount of nonlinearity in the temperature dependence. And the, the amount of the, some deviation from the linear fitting is uh, as much as around several hundred megahertz. If you consider the temperature, some dependence of the BDG, then this corresponds to several degrees. So what I can say is, uh, it's not negligible if you want to make use of uh, the BDG as a temperature sensor. And this is another types of PM Panda fiber, which is a 80 micrometer fiber. As you see here, here also 
you can we can observe some some linearity which has different shapes from the Fusgura panda fiber. The one important some interesting point is that uh, when there's a jacket and when there's no jacket, two effects has some there's some difference in the linearity itself. For example, in the panda fiber, when you have a jacket corresponds to the some red red spot here on the right graph. When you you don't have jacket, then from the temperature around the 60 degree, the results are splitted in the low temperature cases. And also in the case of uh, the 80 micrometer panda fiber, also the results are different, uh, even from the around 100 uh, degrees. So from this, the jacket really have some effect on the biofrequency itself. So our conclusion, temp tentative conclusion, is that nonlinearity in the temperature dependence of delta n is not negligible. So consideration is needed in sensing applications. <clears throat> Next section is about the uh, distributed sensing by BDG in the fuel mode fiber. In fuel mode fiber, we can also operate the Brillouin dynamic rating in a similar manner to the polarization maintaining fibers. For example, we can uh, generate the dynamic rating using LP0 mode and LP1 mode can be reflected from the grating. In this case, if you make a formula, then we have almost the same final equation. In, the, in this case, the delta n is uh, <coughs> not the bilateral polarization. This is the some index difference between different spatial modes. So in PM fiber, the polarization modes are coupled by Brillouin dynamic grating, but in this fuel mode fiber, spatial modes are coupled by Brillouin dynamic grating. One of the some simplest type of the fuel mode fiber is the elliptic core two mode fiber. In this case, the LP01 and LP1 mode exist, and according to the polarization, they are splitted. So we have four different modes. And for BDG operation, we can combine LP01 and LP1 mode in four different ways. And for each pair of modes, we can measure the Brillouin dynamic rating spectrum. And this is the result. And from this spectrum, if we find the local peak of the Brillouin dynamic rating uh, BDG frequency, then we can uh, obtain the BDG frequency map according to the position like this. As you see here, the, according to the pairs of the modes, we, we have a different BDG frequency, and it corresponds to different uh, bit lengths between the modes. From this bit length, we can also calculate the delta n, the index difference between different optical modes. <clears throat> if we modify this result a little bit, so by subtracting between each other, then the <clears throat> by refinance map for each mode can be obtained. For example, if we subtract these uh, some two two different cases, then what we observe is what we obtain is the pure bifringence of each mode. For example, the okay. For example, the above one is uh, LP1 mode bifringence, and the low one is LP0 mode bifringence, and this is the, the final map we obtained <coughs> for different modes. So in this fiber, the LP1 mode has larger Bifringence than the epigenome mode, and it changes in a similar way to each other in, along the fiber. And also, we tested the temperature and strain dependence of the BDG frequency for different pairs of mode in this fiber. As you see here, the <coughs> they show different values, different slopes for each mode. And it is interesting to compare the, this slope with the ordinary Brillouin frequency and the ordinary BDG frequency in PM fiber. It's slightly larger than ordinary Brillouin frequency, but the, when compared to the BDG frequency in PM fiber, it's much lower. And another <coughs> thing, this is the, some strain dependence, and as, when you compare this value with the ordinary uh, Brillouin, Brillouin system, then maybe the, sometimes it's smaller and sometimes it's larger, but the interesting thing is it has negative slope, so it has different slope with the ordinary cases. So different pairs of modes for BDG show different temperature strain dependence. So I think in the future this might be used for 
discriminative sensing of temperature and stream. Then I summarize my talk. Uh, to split five sensors using brilliant dynamic ratings were uh, reported, and OTDA or OTDR or OCDA type BDG sensors were reported with a higher temperature and strain sensitivity, around 50 times for temperature and 20 times for strain compared to ordinary brilliant sensors. Nonlinear temperature dependence of delta n was first observed by dynamic rating, and BDG operation for few modifiable characterization with various temperature strain sensitivity was reported. And before end, I would like to acknowledge the contribution of Mr. Yonghyun Kim, who is the master student of laboratory who did almost all the experiments in the recent works. Thank you very much for attention.